thought I had done a first run impressions on this, but apparently I haven't. But what's up everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So yeah, I thought I had done a full review on the Nike Invincible, but I apparently didn't. This shoe has well over 50 miles in it, so I figured this week's a good time to do that. Check it off the list, what do you think? I think I have a pretty good handle at this point on how I feel about this shoe, what the pros are, what the cons are, what I would rate it. So let's not waste any time. Let's get to the running footage, which is low key the same footage from my last video, but it's fine. Just work with me. unfamiliar with how I structure my full reviews, let me give you a rundown. First, we're gonna go over the specs, then we're gonna talk about the upper, the midsole, the outsole, the pricing of the shoe, and the conclusion. And that's where I'm gonna rate the shoe out of five stars. So if it's the best shoe I've ever worn and I never wanna take it off my foot, it's gonna be five stars. And if it's the worst shoe I've ever worn and I never want to wear it again, it's gonna be one star. And at the end, I'll throw up a screen with the pros and the cons so you can get a visual idea of what I liked and what I disliked. I'm not gonna go over every intricate detail of the upper, the midsole, and the outsole. That's really something I do in my first run impression. So if you want those details, just click the link above. Maybe it's here or here. Hmm. When, I forget now, I think it's here. And one more thing before we get started today, I do wanna let you guys know that this shoe was sent to me by a running warehouse and Nike for the purpose of review. However, they're not telling me what to say. They're not gonna see this video before you. No one's getting paid to make this. I sure ain't. And all of my opinions, are my own. As for the specs of the Nike Zoom X Invincible, the weight is 8.9 ounces for a women's size eight. And for my size 10 and a half women's, this shoe comes in at 10 ounces. A Little bit heavy. We have an 8.4 millimeter drop with 34.2 millimeters of stack in the heel and 25.8 in the forefoot, very specific. And for me, the Nike Zoom X Invincible is true to size. The Nike Zoom X Invincible is using their Flyknit material. Now, Flyknit to me feels different in every single shoe, and here that's no different. It feels different than any other Flyknit shoe that I have tried. In the midfoot, we don't have a ton of overlays, although you do have the Nike logo, which I guess perhaps could be acting as one. And if we go to the back uh, by the heel counter, it is a pretty sturdy heel counter and has this sort of heel clip wrapping around for some extra stability on that platform. In my first run impressions video, I said that the upper was a little bit thick and I was wondering how it would feel in the summer months. Well, here we are, in the summer months, finally. And actually, it surprised me. Today on my run, it was pretty hot outside and I thought that my foot was just gonna be sweating to death in this shoe and it truly, it didn't really. I did actually feel some air passing through the forefoot of the shoe and I was pretty shocked pleasantly about that. I was especially surprised about that because we have this fly knit upper as like the exterior of the shoe, but inside there's another like little mesh panel uh, that like really lays on top of your foot. So with the two layers there, I thought we really were gonna have problems in the summertime, but we didn't and that's great. Although I really don't like these laces, I don't like the feeling of them really. It's more of an aesthetic vibe. I don't feel like they look like running shoe laces. Uh, they do stay tied. However, they are pretty short. So if you're trying to use that last loophole, good luck. And as far as fit goes, the shoe fits me just fine. I have a narrow foot now, keep that in mind. Um, but I was able to get a nice, comfortable, snug, yet not suffocating feel here. 
and I feel like I had enough room in the toe box. There are some things about this upper besides the laces that I don't really understand. Uh, the tongue is really thick and a strange material. And I also really just do not understand why we have padding around the outside here of the heel counter. And then this like little other pod of fabric. I mean, I just, I think this, this just makes the shoe heavier. We could definitely go do without that. You wanna put padding inside the shoe where my heel's actually gonna be sitting, then fine. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary here. I said that in my first run impressions and I'm saying it again. The whole upper is just a strange design to me, but it oddly worked. And I had no issues with blisters, irritation, hot spots, nothing like that. So overall, despite kind of the weird vibe of the shoe and the, the weird look of it, I guess I didn't have any problems with it and I kind of quite like the way it feels. The midsole of the Nike Zoom X Invincible is all Zoom X. And until this shoe, we kind of thought as Zoom X as this fast and furious foam, one of the highest performing, if not the highest performing foam on the running shoe market. Before the Invincible, the first shoe I thought of when I thought about Zoom X was the Next Percent or the Alpha Fly. But now I almost think about the Invincible more when someone says Zoom X, because to me, this shoe is a lot more user friendly and usable than those other shoes. I have absolutely loved putting this foam to the test when it comes to easy days, longer mileage. That's where this shoe sits in my lineup for sure. Anytime I wanna go out a little bit easier and not really break down my body, the way the Zoom X feels underfoot for those runs. I mean, for one, it's not a boring foam, it's exciting, it's bouncy. You're gonna get some response there, a lively ride, which is not something that you can say necessarily for easy day shoes. And with all of that fun comes protection from the road. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. Honestly, the Zoom X Invincible is a shoe that I always want to reach for. If you guys watched my last video or just follow me on social media, then you know that I'm currently training for the Chicago Marathon. And one of the options I said for my easier days, for my longer, slower distance runs would be the Zoom X Invincible. And it's been so fun. I mean, it's only been a week of training, but it's just been so, so much fun to just lace this up on a day where I'm gonna be going slower because you know, sometimes we have issues holding back on those runs and maybe feeling bored or whatever the case is, but I don't feel bored in this shoe. After over 50 miles, this shoe really doesn't have any degradation in the midsole that I can tell. It feels just as bouncy as it did the first day that I got it, which is a huge plus. And yeah, I really recommend this shoe for those kinds of runs, easier days, daily training miles where you're not trying to pick up the pace. Now, however, there are two things about this shoe in the midsole that I find to be negatives. And the first one is the stability. Of course, with Zoom X, as we know, it's very bouncy, very soft, and those are two things that do cause instability in shoes. Uh, Nike tried to fix that a little bit with the heel clip, and it does do the job somewhat, but if you're an overpronator, you're gonna overpronate in this shoe. And the other negative I'd say is that this really isn't as versatile of a shoe as I thought it would be. It kinda does suffer a bit in the tempo area. 10 ounces is a little too heavy for me for a tempo day pace, and I think a lot of you would feel the same. So yeah, two negatives for me, stability and versatility, but really those are not deal breakers and not even that bad. So that's just how much I like this midsole. Nike is using blown rubber for the outsole of the Zoom X Invincible. It's a big old slab of it right down the middle. And we have these two other little blown rubber spots that are green. Honestly, I think the traction on the shoe is pretty damn good. Uh, yes, this is a lot of rubber, probably does make the shoe heavier. So that is a bit of a negative, but I do think that it helps the durability. After 50 miles, I'm really not seeing a ton of wear here. There are some smoothed out kind of lugs in the forefoot right at the top by the toes. But other than that, yeah, they kind of look unscathed. I have taken this out on uh, wetter days, some sand, gravel, all that kind of stuff you may encounter on the streets of your suburban neighborhood or wherever you live. And I have not had any issues with it. It performed well in every case. So another thumbs up here for me. The Nike Zoom X Invincible is $179.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which is way overpriced for the shoe, but I can say I'm surprised because 
Nike. If you're interested in picking it up, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Click that link and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind, this will be an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can put you onto these shoes that I think are just a ton of fun. I can't lie. I am a very big fan of this shoe. I'll be the first one to give Nike a hard time when they come out with a product that I think is subpar, but I can't do that because this just is not subpar. And for that reason, I'm giving the Nike Zoom X Invincible four and a half out of five stars. It's really up there for me. Yeah, I knocked it down for the stability and for the versatility of the shoe. But other than that, I think that this is gonna be a fun, exciting shoe for a lot of different kinds of runners. I can definitely see a beginner runner in this shoe and I could totally see an elite, you know, professional marathoner in this shoe, whatever you are. All right, so now let's throw up the screen with the pros and the cons. For pros, I have midsole fun, the upper fit and comfort, but this is a whole new way to use ZoomX foam. And the durability of the shoe seems to be great. For cons, I have the stability, the versatility, and for some of you, probably the price will be a con. And those are my thoughts on the Zoom X Invincible, a shoe that I will certainly be using quite a bit during this training cycle. And I might even need a new pair by the end of this, depending on how well this holds up. But so far we're going strong here. Well, everyone, that concludes my full review of the Nike Zoom X Invincible. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notification bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Invincible! I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like hell. See you next time. I could literally sit here and press this foam all day. It's like a stress ball. It's, it's very therapeutic. You should try it. Highly recommend.